Hey everybody and welcome to the lifestyle section of my YouTube channel Move with Sable which isn't much of a section as of yet but as always we are promising more and it will be very very soon. Today I want to make for you or show you how to make my tried and true pork carnitas. I get asked about food that I make all the time and I'm very bad about sharing recipes because I don't write this shit down. <laughs> so I really think that this is the recipe that I've tweaked and that I use every time because they're good every time. So I've got everything set out. I'll walk you through this and hopefully you can make these at home. If you have any questions about this recipe, just leave me a comment or send me a message. You know the drill. So to make these carnitas, I'm going to be using my Ninja Foodie. This is the pressure cooker, the broiler, the baker, the air crisper, like the eight in one deal. And this is a lifesaver in my kitchen. It's a staple in my kitchen. I probably use it twice a day. So, pork carnitas. They can be used for breakfast. You make them with eggs and potatoes. I love it. They can be used for lunch. They can be used for dinner. They're very versatile <clears throat> and yummy. So just a sidebar, what you're gonna find in my recipe videos is gonna be real food, not only food rules, and if I am doing something that seems non-traditional, it's probably because I have a scientific reason or because that's what works best for my body or for my family. Without further ado, here comes the stuff for this stuff. So I have a pork sirloin roast. I'm gonna add that, not sliced or anything, to my foodie. <clears throat> and then here comes all of the spices and the whatnot that gives this the ultimate flavor. So I'm gonna add some chicken broth, some palm sugar, And a little water too. So in typical me fashion, um, I haven't measured all of this exactly, but in the comments I will leave some more detailed measurements for this recipe, okay? So citrus. Citrus is a must in carnitas. I'm going to do the zest of one orange, the zest of one lime, the juice from both of these, all of this right here, zester. If you're not zesting your citrus, you're not even living. Who are you? Because it smells amazing. I love it. And it just adds a fresh quality to your food that you don't get otherwise. when you're zesting you want to make sure that you're just getting the outside edge of your fruit you're not trying to get in to that white flesh because that's the bitter part you just want to release the oils that have the flavor for your citrus <clears throat> and I'm just gonna hand squeeze these babies you can use this juicer if you want but I like to get my hands in the food. Then we're gonna add our savory things. We've had our citrus, we've got our sugar to cut the citrus. I'm gonna add some onion and garlic right here. <clears throat> and then we'll add all of our herbs and spices, starting real simple with salt and pepper. Right now, 
right now. I'm measuring all this with love, and I'll give you more in the comments about how much to put in. <clears throat> And as I do more of these videos, you'll notice um, I like to use fresh ground, salt and pepper. And then right here, I've got fresh oregano. I like to use fresh whenever possible. Hence, fresh, you know, real food. And I'm going to crush my oregano leaves up a little bit. Because that helps release the oils and that adds the flavor, that punches up the flavor. There's my oregano. And then I'm going to add cumin and a bay leaf. You don't have to crush your bay leaf. You actually want to be able to fish it out of your um, broth, juice, whatever, because it doesn't, it doesn't soften. Bay leaf is going to stay dry. So just one bay leaf, some cumin, and that's that. That's all the ingredients. It's not a whole lot. <clears throat> Simple and effective. And now for the foodie here, for the foodie here, this is a nice removable section of the, the pressure cooker. So you got everything kind of mixed up in here. I'm going to massage it just a little bit there. Nom noms. put the lid on my cooker so the pressure this is the pressure lid this is the other lid you gotta make sure that your seal is on and I kind of want these to be ready before dinner time so I'm gonna go ahead and put them <clears throat> on high is the pressure cook setting and that's a two pound it's a, almost a two pound shoulder. So for every pound, you want like eight to 10 minutes. I'm gonna put it on 14 minutes for pressure. And then I'll come back and we'll do a little crisp video and we'll show you that. So the awesome thing about this, you get to walk away. So the roast is done pressure cooking and I'm gonna take it out and bring it over here and slice it up a little bit. The amazing thing about the Ninja is that that only took 14 minutes turning off the keep warm function here and it's going to be delicious it's going to taste like it cooked for hours and this can be on the table in probably 30 to 40 minutes so i'll prep here so i'll burn myself pulling out the crock and bring this over here set it on my cooling tray so it might not be like a hundred percent done in the middle but that's okay Pressure cooking is like a flash cook feature on this thing. So I'm going to slice it up a little bit. Kind of shave off pieces, make different sizes. Because that's interesting when you make your tacos or your nachos or whatever you're going to make with your pork. See, I've still got a little bit of pink juice. But that's what I want right here. So remember, depending on the size of your roast, I did 14 minutes. This one was a little under two pounds. So if you're cooking for more people and you have like a four or five pound roast, you're probably going to go for like 18 to 20 minutes on your pressure cook. be nice and juicy. And you can always <clears throat> chop it up some more when it's all done. Right now I'm just trying to expose some edges, expose the inside a little bit because I'm going to put it back in this delicious broth right here. And I'm going to use the air crisp feature and get some nice crisp on some of the edges that adds texture 
and brings out some of the other flavors of the pork. Like this is my fake cooking show. Do you see how I'm using words like texture and flavors? So I have just kind of immersed that back in to that nice broth. I'm gonna put it back in my cooker. Different lid this time. This is the air crisp lid. Air crisp, I'm turning it to 10 minutes to start on 400. And I get to walk away again. So the first time I let it cook for about 14 minutes, went and did some stuff. You might could prep your sides or other things, and then you just turn it back on for your air crisp, and your hands are still free. So we'll be back in a minute to show you the air crisp and the final product of this carnitas. So I had turned the air crisp on for about 10 minutes. I gave it a stir. It wasn't quite the way I like it. So I turned it on for five more minutes, and here we are. I wish you could smell this because it smells amazing. So we're gonna take some of this out. I'm gonna slice some of it up and make myself a little taco with it. See if I can get a taste test for my cameraman here. Here, try this. Here. Does it pass the test? <laughs> That's probably more than enough, but I'm hungry, so my eyes are bigger than my plate here. I'm gonna give I like to give my little rough slice. very tender. So excited. This is one of my favorite things to make. But and because I'm a little bit of a meat snob, I'm gonna give my dog the, the grizzly part. Come on. <laughs> so I just have a whole wheat uh, tortilla. I'm gonna throw some fresh slaw on here. I do cheat on the slaw and get the prepackaged stuff at the store just for time. Um, a generous helping of fresh guac. Throw my meat on there. Mm. That's so good. Um, fresh cilantro. I'm talking with my mouth full, but it's worth it. And there is my tried and true pork carnitas recipe. Make sure that you follow me on Insta so you can see how I use this in different ways throughout the week. And let me know if you make it at home and how it goes for you. <clears throat> oh, hey, and because I'm really lame at making these videos, make sure you like and subscribe so that you can see when we do more things.